top two organisms I love aside from my cats. Number one, none. Number two, Bologna ventricosa. Hi, this is Jen Ayana Goff from Bio102XY and this is my report on my favorite algae, Bologna ventricosa. Moving on to the more formal part of my report, let's discuss the morphology of my organism. Due to its spherical or oval thallus, Bologna ventricosa is known as the sailor's eyeball or bubble algae. The body is hollow with a smooth, glossy, and translucent bright to dark olive green color as shown in the figures in this slide. It is a single-celled macroorganism and can reach 6 cm high and 1 to 5 cm in diameter. But to understand it better, it is actually xenocytic, meaning it is supposed to be made up of multiple cells, but due to the absence of cell walls, the entire organism is considered to be unicellular but contains multiple nucleus and chloroplasts. In this example, in the figure below, though it is for fungi because I was not able to find a better illustration. But this, the idea is still the same. The synocytic hypha is composed of a single cell because it has no septum, but we can see that it is made up of multiple nucleus. So, but the entire hypha is single-celled because there are no septa that separates them. So that's the same idea for Bologna ventricosa. It also has a small inconspicuous rhizoid that arises from its basal haptoral cells, like a holdfast, that functions for substrate attachment. It usually grows in shaded places or on dead corals. They may also live in between live coral branches and in the middle to shallow subtidal zones. Usually, they can also be found in association with other algae, like the ones shown in this figure. So we can see the Bologna ventricosa inhabiting different underwater zones. In the main picture, at the center, Bologna ventricosa is inhabiting dead corals in association with Lobophora. In the first inset, it's found on the lower intertidal zone. In the second inset, it is found in the upper subtidal zone with Amphiroa and Dictyosphaeria. And in the third inset, the Valonia ventricosa is found in the intertidal zone and again, they are attached to substrates through their rhizoids. In terms of phylogeny, Valonia ventricosa is under Kingdom Plantae, Phylum Chlorophyta because it is a green algae, class Ulvophyceae, a taxonomic group composed of marine green macroalgae, and order Siphonocladales. It is a member of family Valoniaceae which consists of synocytic green algae, and genus Valonia, known for members with multinucleated cells. And finally, species Ventricosa for its signature gigantic bubble-like morphology. In this phylogenetic tree, we can see that Valonia Ventricosa is under the Siphonocladalis clade and is actually sister groups with another Valonia species, Valonia Igagropila, as they both diverge from a common node which also depicts a common ancestor. Moving on to the quirks and utilities of Bologna ventricosa, the first odd thing for me would be that it is a giant cell. It is very amazing because cells are usually microscopic, right? So it's quite unbelievable to see one giant cell. Using their mucilages, which are polysaccharides that can function in thickening membranes, they also have a quick regeneration process to fix cellular injuries. It can also be used to understand electrophysiology, the study that associates electrical phenomena to bodily activities. Actually, there is already a study that associated the sinusitic structure of Bologna ventricosa to its electrophysiology. Hopefully, there will be more attention given to Bologna ventricosa for more studies in the future and discover practical approaches of their properties. These are the references that I used. That's all and thank you!